Internet Brothers, welcome to the channel. After somewhat of a long hiatus, we are back today and we are talking about suppressors. Specifically, the Cat WB718. Let's talk about who Cat is. Cat jumped onto the scene in kind of a non traditional way where they were talking trash to everybody on forums like ARFCOM and Reddit, kind of <laughs> ruffling a couple of feathers to say the least. Their marketing team claims that that was intentional. Other people think that they just had to walk it back after pissing off a bunch of people. I don't care personally. They have quite a cheesy or kind of a corny line of marketing also associated with them. The company's point being, you should be able to look past some of these things and bad marketing things like that and look into the technologies that's what you should be caring about for me i can do that so that's how i wound up with one of these let's take a second to talk about the current state of the suppressor world at least in the civilian context suppressor ownership is exploding directly as a result of lower wait times for nfa tax stamps money is pouring into these companies and into the industry as a whole. So we're kind of, we're getting to the point of almost like a space race in terms of technology of who has, who is the top dog and what is changing in terms of the technology. I would consider Cat to be the top dog of suppressor technology right now. Slightly edging out Huxworks, who has been for several years has been what I would consider probably one of the, be the best suppressor manufacturers, at least when it comes to flow through or in the instance of high flow technologies. How does CAT and their technology edge out other suppressor manufacturers? Well, they're using something that they're calling surge bypass as their system that uh, whatever voodoo magic they have going on with it, it works very well considering this uh, small can, I would, which is in reality basically a K-can in terms of length, I would say it holds up to some, if not most, of the full length or duty size cans. That might be a slight exaggeration of my part, but it's, it's very quiet considering that how short the can is and how many baffles are in it. Something else that's advancing in suppressor technology is also build material. Suppressors are typically made out of steel, titanium, aluminum, or some combination of them together. Now they're manufacturing things that they call super alloys, Inconel being one of them. There are several others and a lot of companies have their own proprietary type of material that they use for, uh, for the construction of modern suppressors. This one being 718 Inconel, a proprietary, a proprietary material that cat is using for this can the overall length of this can is 5.8 inches it is not a terribly long can it still in my mind falls within the k can uh, length but for the performance you get out of it it's actually quite exceptional in that sense weighing in at 16.8 ounces it is not terribly heavy is it the lightest thing ever no they do offer them in titanium, and those are obviously going to be lighter options for those of you that care about that. Me personally, I'd rather, I care more about the lifespan and being able to, you know, I like to shoot fast and, you know, I like to shoot fast and burn down targets and I don't really have to worry so much about the lifespan of the Inconel comparatively to the titanium. I would want it to cool down a little bit more like I wouldn't be putting strings of rounds through a titanium can uh, like I would an Inconel one or a stainless steel one for that matter. Most of them kind of take the abuse to a point. Uh, there are demonstrations of guys putting titanium cans of full auto uh, weapons and they hold up shockingly well nowadays but still for the peace of mind and longevity hard use materials that's what I'm looking for in a suppressor they are attached to you for life. Let's talk about what makes these cans the king currently of suppressor technology, in my opinion, for a high flow or flow through uh, suppressor technology. These mitigate concussion entirely. They are quieter than the Huxworks cans, at least the K can, in my opinion. 
They have virtually no flash signature whatsoever. And um, under night vision, they do not glow. They do not have the same visual signature that a Huxwork can has after you put like five rounds through one, you look at it uh, through night vision and they are glowing. No glow. Right, which is suboptimal if that is your one of your concerns. So that is one that is those are the main reasons why that I think that these are the top dog in terms of modern suppressor tech technologies and offerings. <sighs> Pricing, they are expensive. They're right there with Huxworks. These sell for twelve hundred dollars roughly, and then keep in mind you have to pay two hundred dollars for a stamp as well. So they are not cheap cans. But I think the technology, the value you get out of it, I would say is adequate. They are, they are good cans. In terms of back pressure, they have maybe slightly a little bit more back pressure than the Huxworks cans, but say if a Huxworks is like a 10 out of 10 in terms of getting no gas to the shooter, you know, as you're shooting, this is probably a nine. It's very close. So yes, there is some gas, but it's really negligible compared to the uh, traditional baffle systems being used. So while you're not eliminating gas entirely, it is, from a shooter, it's fine. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't get gassed out in terms of long strings of shots. I don't get gassed out at all. So as you can see, it's not horrible. Um, the Hux works edges it out just barely in terms of uh, gas mitigation, but is completely serviceable. In terms of point of impact, um, I am using the Spooky uh, QD, so Cat's very own flash hider. Uh, and the impact shift has been minimal, which I think is fantastic. I mean, maybe, maybe an inch at 100, something like that. So I'm very happy uh, with uh, with that. So one thing I will comment about, and I guess it's kind of typical with most, if not all, cans, is the finish over time. They get a little they get a little rough, and um, this is no exception to that. It's held up fairly well. It's not terrible, but I do wish that they would put a little bit more into their coatings. That would be nice as a end user. So overall with the performance of the can itself, I'm happy with it, I'm thrilled. Maybe I'll look into getting a different one. They are quite expensive, so I don't know. But uh, overall, I think these are fantastic devices. They're very well designed and you can read into, I guess some of the technology, you can read deeper into the technologies on their website if you're interested. And something else that we're seeing in the world of suppressors, in addition to using better materials or the super alloy materials is the way they are constructed. These are, you're starting to see what is known as 3D printing in the suppressor world, which in reality is laser bed infusion, which for quite some time, it, it's just, it's a more expensive process for suppressor manufacturers to use, but it's starting to become the norm, which is better for us as end users. So 3D printed cans seem to be the way of the future as well. And this is one of them. I'll be curious to see who answers CAT in terms of the next step forward in suppressor technology. It might be Huxworks, it might be some other company we've never heard of before, who really knows. But that's something I appreciate about the, something I appreciate about the philosophy of CAT is their concern allegedly at least according to their own at least according to their own material what they're really interested in doing is moving suppressor technology forward and they themselves have done that so the ball is in somebody else's court so i'll be curious to see who steps up to the plate to take that crown away from cat so yeah that is the cat wb 718 suppressor Oh, do me a favor, like and subscribe.